that's is certainly the main question here in Davos is what we can do to actually contain this European debt crisis. Europe does have a mountain to climb. Austerity is biting across the Eurozone. Markets are roiled by the debt crisis and nations are just being forced to go cap in hand to the bailout fund. So can Europe contain the contagion. Well, joining me is OECD Secretary General Angel Gurria and the General Manager of the Bank for International Settlements, Jamie Caruana. Thank you to you both for joining us. Jamie, I want to start with you, actually, because what is a single risk that markets seem to be overlooking at the moment that actually risks the stability of our financial system? I think one of the major risks at this very moment is uh, uh, comes from the fiscal side and the fiscal in combination with the still fragilities in the financial system. So I think this is particularly uh, um, a dangerous combination. So um, uh, we have we need more fiscal consolidation, and uh, uh, we have seen uh, the limits of some of the fiscal expansion, and these limits arrive when uh, markets start to perceive uh, this uh, uh, potential risk that the macroeconomic risk of fiscal consolidation becomes a financial risk. And this is what we are seeing. So the recipe is, to me, quite obvious. We need to uh, deepen uh, the consolidation, and that requires additional elements that probably we will discuss. And how really consolidation is a problem we have at all levels, whether it be political or on the fiscal level. Well, the problem is that uh, policymakers are being asked to uh, uh, perform one of the most difficult feats, uh, and that is we are coming out of the recession. Uh, you know, we stabilize the financial system by throwing a lot of money at it. Uh, it needed to be done. Then uh, we uh, got out of the recession by throwing a lot of money at it. Uh, and then... Uh, we're now uh, dealing with the uh, unemployment figures, 10 percent unemployment, you know, uh, uh, never seen before, by throwing a lot of money at it. Um, and, of course, we're running out of money because we've been throwing out, of it, you know, a, a lot of it. Uh, and, and, and we now have these huge uh, uh, fiscal deficits for the year, but also an uh, accumulation of more than 30 points of GDP over a very short period of time. We were at 60 to 70 percent debt to GDP. We are now crossing the 100 percent level. That means the total accumulated debt in the case of the OECD countries will now be larger than their whole GDP, rather than uh, larger than all of the wealth that they produce in a single year. That is obviously unsustainable. And so how do you mm, soft land these big debt numbers, which are the result of something we decided to do because we wanted to be out of the hole into the recession, and at the same time not kill the recovery? That is the mix. That is the balance. And we've got to strike a new balance. For 18 months, we were worried only about the recovery. Now we've got to be worried also about fiscal consolidation. Uh, sure, but if you look at the U.S., well, they're saying we have to continue spending because this is the only way that we're sure that we're going to grow. Here in Europe, the guys have been saying, well, I'm getting punished by the bond traders that want to punish my country, so I need to put very strong austerity measures. Wh who's right? I think there are differences of, of uh, the situation uh, across countries. Uh, again, the key point is when uh, fiscal deficit and, and fiscal debt, uh, government debt, becomes a financial issue. And in the case of some countries in Europe, it has become a financial issue. But I think that the problem is wider than just in Europe. I think it's a wider phenomenon and the need for fiscal consolidation. The timing may be different, but at the needs for fiscal consolidation is much wider among uh, 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 advanced countries. And I agree, the, the levels of the debt, and even with consolidation, the levels of the debt are going to continue to go up. And, and this is something that we should pay uh, attention and, to. And I'm talking about, you know, these numbers of 100 percent debt to GDP. This is public debt. Yeah. Yes. You have, in some cases, a very large accumulation of private sector debt, including or adding to the financial debt. I mean, it was the banks that brought down Ireland. It was the bank that brought out Iceland, you know. It was not uh, their, their, uh, their deficit. So, uh, in, in many cases, when you take all the debt, all the exposure to cross-border debt, you're really talking more than 100 percent, more than 200 percent, although the only country that's just unmitigated uh, gold medal for public debt is Japan, of course, 200 percent. 
uh, of a debt to GDP. And yet, S&P actually cut their credit rating on Japan today by one notch. I mean, how do you well, react to uh, that? The, yes, the, the, the rating agencies are famous for uh, not having their timing very well. They don't act uh, in a preventive way. They, they, just, uh, they just make the hole deeper, you know. Uh, I was very uh, intrigued to see that uh, right in the middle of the Irish crisis, you know, then uh, the, the rating agency decided to, yeah. down, to downgrade the Irish banks. Well, already we know the Irish banks were in a great big hole. You didn't need the rating agencies to tell us. So, you know, I, I think they're making things worse. They're not helping. Uh, we've just actually had some breaking news, so I'm just going to jump in there two seconds because uh, we had the main index in Egypt having to stop because of a lot of the rioting. Now it's down some 10 percent. Is there a concern? that we're actually going to see a lot of the money coming out of northern Africa because we see the food prices and really social instability taking hold. I guess it's too soon to say that, but I think that the steel markets are in a vulnerable situation and they can shift the flows uh, rapidly, but it would be for me too soon to say anything of this kind. We can't run public policy, uh, finance policy, uh, because of uh, the, day, the day's stock market okay. indicators, you know. We need trends. And of course, here you're talking about a problem of governance, which is beyond whether they have the interest rates right or whether they have the deficits right. Uh, and uh, that is, is a problem that probably goes deeper. It, it only also uh, underlines the fact that uh, governance issues and stability of a broader nature are just as important as good economic policy. Uh, food prices, is, is this going to be a real concern for this year? I think food prices are influencing uh, prices yeah. and uh, food prices come in part for supply problems but also from demand problems. Uh, uh, this will create additional pressures on inflation, particularly in some countries where the pressures on inflation are already high in emerging markets. And I think we have, uh, they, uh, the authorities have to pay attention and uh, probably not lag behind in their measures in order to contain these inflationary pressures that may be building up. Jaime is right in terms of saying the food price hike is affecting the overall price level. But then if you just take a look at the price hike itself, it, you know, if it stays there, it's going to add 100 million more hungry people in the world, you know, like it did in 2008. So it also has very specific so nationally uh, located uh, political uh, impacts. And uh, as Jaime just suggested, it is not just a question of the price and certainly not only about speculation. Okay. It has to do about fundamental imbalances in terms of investment and working about seeds and water and land management mm -hmm. and making agriculture uh, a good attractive source of business again. Angel Guria, Jaime Caruana, thank you so much for joining